And the breaking news, Israel striking Iran overnight in retaliation for Tehran's unprecedented drone and missile attack last weekend. The International Atomic Agen Energy Agency saying there is no damage to Iran's nuclear sites. No official statement has been sent out from the Biden administration, but sources say that U.S. officials were notified before the strike and the U.S. was not involved. Joining me right now is Robert Greenway. He is the former senior director for the National Security Council under Trump, principal architect of the Abraham Accords, and Heritage Foundation director for the Center of National Security. He's also a former Army Special Forces combat veteran. Robert, thanks very much for your expertise and for joining us this morning. Your reaction to, Iran, uh, to Israel's retaliation. Good morning, and thanks for having me on. I think what we're seeing now is that escalation between Iran and, uh, and Israel has been deferred, but it is not done. Both of them climbed the ladder from indirect conflict for decades with one another to direct and open conflict for the first time, and neither side have climbed back down. And what that means ultimately is that uh, we're seeing an increase in commodity and energy prices that's likely to continue, because what we've seen is a Tehran has uh, sent a message not just to the United States and to Israel, but to the rest of the region that knows that they can't defend themselves from such an attack and they don't have U.S. support to do so. And for the first time now, Tehran, Moscow and Beijing, along with Riyadh and the Gulf states, can together manage global energy markets. And that's already re uh, resulting in a price in commodities and energy costs direct Americans at the grocery store and the gas pump. And that's likely to continue. And that is the vital national strategic interest of the United States. Uh, Robert, there is breaking news right now from The Wall Street Journal reporting that President Biden is now weighing more than $1 billion in new arms for Israel. This deal reportedly being considered, it would include transfers of $700 million in tank ammunition, $500 million in tactical vehicles, and just over $100 million in mortar rounds. The sales would require approval from congressional leaders, and it could take months or years to be delivered. What is your uh, reaction to Biden now weighing this billion dollars in new arms for Israel? I think it's a sound investment, but you're right. The time it takes to deliver may be far too great. Uh, in the end, Israel is a great bulwark against instability in the region, and it's in our interest to support them. So hopefully we can accelerate the process and provide the resources they need because the conflict has changed. It has changed radically, and Israel will need our support and assistance in order to do it. And unlike conflicts in other parts of the world, Israel's only support and assistance really comes from the United States. There aren't a lot of donors and backers and supporters lined up behind us. We're, we're pretty much it. Uh, Robert, what is your take on this strike from Israel? It, it was narrow. Uh, it, it, it was obviously specific, but no serious damage. It, it seems symbolic. Uh, how would you assess this strike? So I think it was designed, and I think it probably achieved the goal, which was to delay escalation directly between the two parties. That doesn't require an Iranian escalation. It sent a message to Tehran that Israel can, in fact, reach out and touch them at the time and place of their choosing. But at the same time, again, the, the message sent to the rest of the region is they're unable to defend themselves, and that gives Tehran sufficient advantage. It's not, unfortunately, just about Iran and Israel. It's about the region and global markets. And that's really what was impacted. And unfortunately, the advantage is not to the United States. So I'm, I'm just wondering if you see this as the potential for a trigger for a broader war throughout the Middle East, perhaps entangling the United States at some point as well. I do. Uh, I think that it might have delayed a greater escalation, but not for long. And I think mm -hmm. ultimately what we're going to see is a potential Israeli incursion to southern Lebanon to stop the Hezbollah strikes that have displaced 80,000 Israelis. And I don't see a, a, a way out of that unless the United States changes policy in the region towards Iran. And absent a denial of resources, they're going to continue to escalate. And we're closer now to direct conflict than we've ever been before and closer to an Iranian nuclear weapon than we have ever been before because of the administration's policies.